One of our motivations to study sheaf cohomology was to be able to compute numerical invariants of quasi-coherent sheaves. And perhaps the most important one is the Euler characteristic. So let's take a look at that. The setup is the following. We take a quasi-coherent sheaf on a projective variety X and define the Euler characteristic as the following integer chi of Xm, namely the sum from zero to the dimension of X of the dimensions of the cohomologies of M with alternating signs. A few remarks are due. First, it looks like we have truncated this sum at dimension of x. But remember that the cohomology vanishes if p is greater than the dimension, so there is no truncation going on. These hp would be 0 if we allowed p uh, beyond the dimension. More difficult is it to prove that each of these hp is a finite number so that the cohomology spaces are finite dimensional. One can show this, which we will not do here. So this is indeed well defined. The first property we will look at of uh, the Euler characteristic, and that is a very useful property, is its additivity. So uh, if I have an exact sequence of quasi-coherent sheaves on a projective variety, then the Euler characteristic of the middle term is the sum of the Euler characteristics of the outer terms. In particular, this happens, for example, if M2 is the direct sum of M1 and M3. So we have additivity over direct sums, but more generally over arbitrary exact sequences. And how do you prove such a thing? Well, you look at the long exact sequence and that ends because since x is a projective variety, as I just mentioned, the dimension of x is an upper bound for the p that give non-zero cohomology. And looking at the exact sequence, it is known that it gives an alternating sum of the um, dimensions, or rather that the alternating sum of the dimensions has to be zero. And from that, you get the fact that the Euler characteristic, by shuffling terms, behaves well with respect to exact sequences. Let's look at some examples. And to simplify notation, we will use the symbol k choose n, even when k is smaller than n or negative. So for any integer k, we define this as the product going down from k to k minus n plus 1 of n uh, divided by n factorial. So this might be 0 when this product is empty. The first example is the Euler characteristic of the twisting sheaves. So we computed the dimensions of the cohomology of these twisting sheaves. And using that, you can deduce directly that the Euler characteristic is n plus d choose n. More generally, if x is a hypersurface of degree d in projective n space, then the Euler characteristic of the twist by E of OX is this difference. So remember that we got this by pulling back the twisting sheaf OPNE along the inclusion of X into P. So how do you prove this? Well, this said inclusion gives us an exact sequence, namely the ideal sequence. So here I have i, the inclusion of x into pn. And to the left, I get the ideal sheaf and 0. But this ideal sheaf, as was an exercise to prove, is 
O, P, N minus D. Now, I tensor this sequence over O, P, N with O, P, N, E. So then I get zero and tensoring behaves additively with respect to these twisting sheaves. So I simply get E plus minus D. Here I get O, P, N, E. And here I get O, X, E. So now I want to compute the Euler characteristic of X, O, X, E. Well, this is the same as the Euler characteristic of P, N of this push forward. Because as we have seen, the push forward doesn't change the cohomologies. And now by additivity of the Euler characteristic, this is the Euler characteristic of the middle term minus the Euler characteristic of the left-hand side. And this is exactly this difference. Let's look at a different sheaf. So let's look at the cotangent sheaf. So refresh your memory about the cotangent sheaf. It turns out that for a hypersurface of degree D inside projective space, then over a field of characteristic zero, we have this formula for the Euler characteristic. This we use two exact sequences that we know in this setting. The first is the Euler sequence, which is zero omega pn o pn minus one to the power n plus one o pn zero. So this is the Euler sequence and we pull it back to get some sequence of sheaves over x so we pull it back by i so again i denote i the inclusion pulling it back here i get o x and o x here so i have this exact sequence and then I have the co-normal sequence over x, which is 0 goes to Ox of minus d goes to i star omega pn goes to omega x goes to 0. Now, what I want to compute is the Euler characteristic of this sheaf from the additivity of Euler characteristic, I know it provided that I can calculate this one and this one. The first one I know from the previous formula. The second one I get by a similar reasoning from the first sequence. So here I can get it knowing this one, which is just Oxe with E equals zero. And this one, uh, knowing that the Euler characteristic of something raised to the power n plus 1 is n plus 1 times the Euler characteristic of the thing itself by repeatedly applying the additivity. So I get these results. If I combine them, I will get the right answer. So let us apply this to curves and in a sketching manner, talk about what we get. So for the remainder of this uh, lecture, let's take C to be an irreducible smooth projective curve. The arithmetic genus of C we define as the integer one minus the Euler characteristic of the structure sheaf of C. 
it is equal if you look at the definition to h1 of c of c this is because all h uh, p for p greater than one will vanish because the dimension of the curve is one and by computing the rest you uh, well there is not much rest going on because you only need to compute h0 and you see that it is one one can show that this equals the geometric genus of the curve that we defined in terms of the canonical divisor a while ago so uh, this gives us one invariant the genus that especially for curves is important in other words the geometric genus is perhaps what we do want to compute but for curves of this shape for irreducible smooth projective curves we can compute it by computing the arithmetic genus so this is one application of Euler characteristic moving on if we have a line bundle L on C we can associate a divisor to it we have done this we did this for elements of the cotangent bundle of C where we associated a divisor namely the the divisor of zeros and poles of this uh, one form and one can do a similar thing for line bundles conversely if you have a divisor then you can define a sheaf in the following way so OCD of u is the set of all elements in the function field uh, of C except for zero whose divisor is greater than or equal to minus D restricted to U so uh, we have seen this before and one can show that any line bundle arises in this way the degree of a line bundle is defined as the Euler characteristic of the line bundle minus the Euler characteristic of the curve we have the notion of degree of a divisor so we would hope that the line bundle arising from a divisor d has the same degree at the, as the divisor and it does so with these notions there is somewhere we might be going and it is the Riemann-Roch theorem so the Riemann-Roch theorem we discussed previously in terms of divisors and now is the time to revisit it with cohomology so again we take a smooth irreducible projective curve remember that we saw that the Riemann-Roch theorem is the following statement that for a divisor d we have these dimensions of vector spaces uh, equal the degree of d minus the geometric genus plus one and this kc is a canonical divisor and these ld were defined in a way reminiscent of the definition on the previous slide of the line bundle uh, associated to a divisor one can show and I leave it as an exercise to you if you wish to correlate these notions that one can state the Riemann-Roch theorem as follows for line bundles namely that if L is a line bundle on C so you might just as well assume that L is this OCD then the zeroth cohomology dimension minus the first cohomology dimension is equal to the degree which is the degree of d minus g plus one so you need to convince yourself that these uh, dimensions their difference is the same as this difference and this requires relating the canonical bundle to the canonical divisor and using some self duality 
you can restate it in terms of divisors using the Euler characteristic. Again, I leave this as an exercise to you to show that if D is a divisor on C, then the Euler characteristic of OCD is equal to the degree of D plus the Euler characteristic of the structure sheaf of C. Not to show this, that would be showing the riemann roch theorem, you're welcome to try to do that, but to show that this is equivalent to the other ones. Finally, let's, since we're anyway talking about curves and divisors, let's take a new look at the Picard group. So the Picard group of a scheme is the abelian group of isomorphism classes of line bundles on the scheme under the tensor product. For an irreducible smooth projective curve, we had a different definition of the Picard group. We defined it as the divisor class group of divisors mod principal divisors. And because any line bundle on a curve arises as OCD, then the assignment that to each line bundle assigns the associated divisor induces an isomorphism between the Picard group and the divisor class group of C. So we were right in calling that the Picard group. The purpose of this slide is just to show you, since we're anyway in the context of divisors and Riemann-Roch, that the divisor class group of a curve has a deeper meaning and comes from a more uh, elaborate object that can be defined on schemes in general. Mentioning this, it is time to end this lecture.